Welcome to the book list brought to you by the Avalog Initiative. Bilateral relations between countries remain the most crucial form of international interactions. This is especially so with neighbours. You and I can change our neighbourhoods. Countries can't. And that is where the understanding of neighbours is so crucial, especially in foreign policy. Our choice of book today is one that tackles the bilateral relationship between two neighbours, India and Sri Lanka and is set in the backdrop of the 1980s. It explores the intrigue surrounding the work of an Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, but more importantly provides in-depth details, documents and a comprehensive dramatist persona. On the book list today is... Assignment Colombo by J. N. Dixit the book starts with the appointment of Dixit as High Commissioner in Sri Lanka in May of 1985 and takes the reader through a very crucial and critical period in bilateral relations between the two neighbouring countries. It deals with the involvement of India in domestic developments of Sri Lanka, forms of mediation that were taken up at that point and various developments around it, as well as the drafting, finalisation and signing of the very famous Indo-Lanka Accord in 1987 and the very tense moments surrounding it. The book also includes uh, details regarding the induction of the Indian peacekeeping forces and the conclusion of his term, which took place in 1989. Now, in addition to all of these details, the book also has a lot of documents, and these documents include the very famous Indo-Lanka Accord, the draft Indo-Lanka Friendship Treaty that was proposed by Sri Lanka to replace the 1987 Indo-Lanka Accord, and several proposals for devolution in addition to many letters that were exchanged at a very senior level. However, what intrigues most about this book is the dramatis personae, or the details of the main characters. Dixit talks about so many of them who were around at that particular period, but two in particular that he talks about. He talks about President Jaya Jayawardhana, and this is an Indian bureaucracy perception of Sri Lankan leaders. Three remarkable characteristics of his political career were firstly his stamina for remaining in public life for six decades and more, despite being in political isolation many times. Secondly, he was the longest serving cabinet minister, holding charge of different portfolios and also the leader of the opposition. The third characteristic was his inclination to use politics and power as instruments for influencing events without any ideological hang-ups permeating his motives. He goes on to provide a detailed account of the first executive president of Sri Lanka, Jaya Jayawardhana, and his dealings with Rajiv Gandhi, who was the then Indian Prime Minister. In addition, Dixit also talks about another very important character in the Sri Lankan political arena and that is Mrs. Sirimao Bandaranaika, the world's first woman prime minister, who by this time had already served as prime minister on two occasions. In his book, Dixit writes, Despite her friendship with Jawaharlal Nehru, she took a detached and neutral stand during the Sino-Indian conflict of 1962. There was no political sympathy for India in her stance at that point of time. One can speculate that her desire to establish good ties with China and Pakistan was motivated by her desire to create a balancing factor against any excessive influence of India on Sri Lankan affairs. And that's a wrap on the book list for today. Join us again next time here on the book list when we explore the world of foreign policy and diplomacy, history and the present, cultures and countries and so much more as we look at books which are interesting, intriguing, and most importantly, informative. See you next time.